That's fine. Here we go. We're going to do this thing. And a three. And a two. And a one. Sunday, June 16th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Yeah, welcome to Comes Out of the Bear Podcast. I've been Sherman Length, episode number 512. And... Uh, I just woke up after being asleep for only about four hours. It's Aww. fucking insomnia. Not to say I didn't try going to bed about eight so I could be up at four so that I would have some time before we start recording, but I forgot to set a setting which turned my do not disturb on. So my alarm when it went off at four didn't actually go off. So, oh, yeah, womp womp. It doesn't really work. Yep, it usually doesn't. So, Gary, um, for those who are listening on Patreon, find out all about your weekend, which is kind of about the topic that we're talking about. What are we talking about today? (laughs) So, uh, here's installment number two in the question mark. What is pride? Okay. So. uh, It is when the seven deadly sins. What's that? It's when the seven deadly sins. There's a shot of it in World of Warcraft. (laughs) It's a deeper love, if you know um, Miss Aretha Franklin's song. Um, so you may well know by now that here in 2019, we are coming up on the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots, which we have talked about actually in the past in previous episodes. Usually we do some like kind of pride focused stuff. So, uh, you know, the Stonewall riots is not the very first, um, incident in which the LGBTQ community basically started standing up for itself and saying, you know. We need to be treated more fairly. It's the one that everyone talks about because of what happened. Um, most protests, most organized groups were doing much smaller kind of things. The riots went on for a couple of days and mm-hmm. like got recognition and headlines of newspapers. And that kind of traveled around the world eventually in the gay community. Uh, and gay being like just a generalized term for the whole uh, grouping. And... You know, it was it was about activism and pushing back against, you know, um, being told that, you know, as a marginalized group that we didn't have rights, that we were, you know, freakish and that we were different and that we didn't deserve to be, you know, treated with the dignity and, and respect just being humans. So now fast forward to 2019 and we're doing a lot of the celebration. It'll be World Pride this year and it's going to be apparently like millions of people turning out in New York City, which is the reason you will not find me there this year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no shade. Like I just like I was talking about I went to Columbus, but there it seemed much more manageable. Like people kind of talked about going to me about going to New York City this year for Pride and I was like, nope. Like from the get go when people brought up, I was like, no, like. I would not mind going to New York City for Pride some year, but not this year. Like, of <laughs> all the years, I just I can't imagine being there with that many people. It's just going to be so much. Yeah. Um, we've been talking about it. So, a chorus, for example, celebrated Pride this year by doing a piece called Quiet No More. It is a piece that was written by the New York, New York City Gay Men's Chorus and the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles. I may have gotten those switched. Um, it was those two choruses and in collaboration with several um, 
writers and arrangers and composers and arrangers to um, create this work that kind of talks about the Stonewall riots as in its beginning and where we've gone from there and what we've been doing. Um, it's a very interesting piece, and we did it last year. But as part of World Pride, they're doing a, I think, 500 or 700 voice chorus during World Pride, the World Pride Festival. So people from all over are doing there. The New York, Gay, New York City Gay Men's Chorus is going to be a part of it. It's going to be a big deal. And some people in the chorus have been talking about maybe going. And I'm kind of like, no. Because um, <laughs> honestly, not just financially, but just like you, like you, Gary, like just the fact that you're going to be in this space with all, the, all, all of these people like is can be a little bit overwhelming um especially for me and now yeah if i had something specifically to focus on like the event and the chorus and the singing i might be able to get through it but i doubt i would stay just to do that i wouldn't go up to new york just to go sing and then come back like that would kind of be not the point you know right. i'd want to do something i'd want to go out because i've not been to new york in years I don't think I've ever but, been to New York City. It's uh, so. I mean, you don't have so to describe I, what New York City well, is, no, no, no. but I mean, I'm just I saying know. I've just never been there. Despite the fact I was born like just a little upstate from it. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a very interesting blend of things, and you get a lot. It's a lot of people. I think that's one of the reasons why it never attracted me. Yeah. It's just a lot of people, and I think that's kind of the benefit and the curse of a large city and them doing this kind of event. Um, it's just going to be packed. It's going to be so busy. Just think of, like, New Year's Eve. If you've ever seen, like, New Year's Eve, um, the Rocky New Year's Eve thing, just think of that. It's going to. I have the feeling it's going to be, like, that capacity, like, that kind of enthusiasm, which is great for, like, the celebrations and what have you, but I've never wanted to go to New York, New York for New Year's Eve because I just feel like I would die. <laughs> like there would be just so many people, and I would get trampled, and I was it's just like just my anxiety would just go out of the roof. And no, no. So, but having said all that, um, we should probably get back on topic. So, the the point being is that. A lot of people are focusing on like the 50th, you know, anniversary aspects of our community and, and, you know, how proud we are of that and how it was individuals standing up for their rights. And we're making more recognition to the fact that it was um, drag queens, it was trans people, you know, it was individuals who just kind of snapped, like they basically mm -hmm. were tired of being hauled in because the Stonewall bar was owned by the mafia and they kind of had an agreement with the local police that they would not necessarily get raided. Um, there was a lot of like backhanded stuff, but also notably as history sometimes is told, the police still had to do raids every now and then because they couldn't always ignore mm -hmm. these um, deviant type of businesses type thing. And so, you know, we just kind of had this, situation where the community was like you know what like we really need to start standing up for ourselves and soon after we ended up having parades and um mm -hmm. eventually ended up with the pride flag and a lot of other stuff you know kind of mushroomed from that and created this like vast uh community that's represented in so many different ways you know vocabulary mm -hmm. and um, visuals and all that kind of stuff so you know, now here we are, and it really kind of made me wonder, like, do we all agree what Pride is? Like, on a personal level versus, like, a larger picture? Like, mm -hmm. well, It's very funny. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. Jeff. I, I think Pride in general is... there. There's a couple of different parts to this. Is There's the personal and there's the communal. Mm -hmm. I used the right word. I'm very happy for that. Um, it it's everybody has their own personal pride for who they are. 
Uh, some people aren't proud yet of who they are. You know, especially those people who are in the closet. They're scared to go out, uh, come out in the closet and all that. Um, until they actually kind of break through that barrier, um, they may not be prideful. They may be like, look, I know this is how I am. This is the way I am. I just can't really tell anybody. So if you can't show anybody, you can't really be that prideful, honestly. Mm -hmm. And they have different ways of showing it. Uh, sometimes it's very personal and it's very one with themselves. Sometimes they want to get loud and proud and go out to events and be around people and go, hey, girl, and all this. But, <laughs> I mean, one thing that people need to respect when it comes to pride in general is that everybody has their own pride. So just because somebody doesn't necessarily go to a pride event doesn't mean that they aren't prideful. Exactly. So, um, and that, that communal pride is, you know, uh, uh, showing it in some way. And sometimes, and everybody has a different level again. It, it's kind of like a personal. So we got the communal of the pride events and just events in general. I mean, just because we're, we're not actually at a specific event that's pride, if you go to a event, you're still kind of being celebrating who you are mm -hmm. um, and being with other people who are with you on that and are very and should be very supportive about that um, so that's where the the kind of communal aspect of it comes in so it, as long as people are respecting how personally prideful somebody is um, uh, everybody should be prideful it's just it also gets weird with how how our community has gone from uh, a straw that broke this camel back, back. We started out being GLBT, and then all of a sudden it was LGBT. Just the G and the L switched. Because I remember for the longest time it was GLBT. And then all of a sudden it's just like commonly LGBT, and I can never think of it as LGBT is anything but lgbt nowadays and now we start adding letters because we're starting to identify other people who belong into the community and mm -hmm. fuck what any, any other people said just because the highlights came with the quote-unquote standard of just the straight homos if that makes any sense the, you know what I, I, mean. I got what you meant i know what you mean now in the g <laughs> we also quickly acknowledge the b and then we have we've had the T this entire time, and even now uh, people are having trouble having the T. They don't they don't well, they don't know the T about the T. That yes exactly yeah, yeah exactly. like I could I could oh I'm not gonna go on a rant in this episode so I'm I'm just gonna be like yes truth fact yeah there and and this is before. We get into any of the other letters of this ever-expanding thing, mm -hmm. which well, annoys me just because I can't re always remember anything past the T. <laughs> well, and, and this is one of the things I think that... It's hard. Is, I'm sorry. I'm a well, bad person. Is, is complex. That's really what it comes down to. And we... I mean, I, I look at it this way. In the history of... of uh, sexuality there was a time when we didn't have the word gay and we didn't have the word homosexuality like the I mean we had the word gay yeah. but it was never meant for for referring to a homosexual until I don't know when right so prior to that like we've always existed quote unquote as a community in which there have been same gender loving relationships mm -hmm. um, and they may have uh you know had marriages of some sort that may legally or not been recognized like society has evolved and adapted and i mean we kind of face this within the, the bear community as well there's all this talk about you know like the animal menagerie you know it's bears <laughs> and cubs and otters and foxes and wolves and blah blah blah, 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 blah you know so this is the way I look at it, you know, when people kind of sometimes, especially from the outside, they're like, it's just so difficult to keep track of everything. And I'm like, well, how much more difficult is it than humanity? 
like humanity is just complex like if you really want to break it down you could say that there are like five or six primary race types but that's not as simple as it is not everybody is african-american slash black everybody Mm -hmm. is not caucasian everybody is not uh native of their land not everybody is latin Mm -hmm. if you like sure you could make it as simple as those five but you could also recognize that there's a lot of mixing and mingling and i'm sure like you could go to a lovely website and do a swab of your mouth and find out what your dna is and then figure out that you're that not really what you think you are i don't know Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but my point is like when it comes to our own community you know when people are like oh but now we've added letters and this and that and i'm like well yeah but it doesn't it, it doesn't affect me because we have grown over the years to basically say everybody who feels marginalized for authentically being themselves and loving who they love is in the same boat. Like we're all facing in some aspects, the same uh, outside pressures and um, disrespect Mm -hmm. because we're not being treated equally in terms of our humanity, regardless of whether we love one person or we love multiple people, whether it's the same gender or multiple genders, Uh, whether or not that individual you know, feels okay in the body that they, you know, were born in and whether or not, you know, some societal concepts deemed that they were a specific gender or they feel that they are any gender. And that's, to me, that was the really nice thing about seeing the parade was a reminder, you know, that it's just a big melting pot. You know, it's, it's very, um, it's going to be a really bad analogy. It's very potluck. It's everyone brings something different to the table, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is Agreed. really kind of, kind of the uh, the ideal of what really the United States was supposed to be. We were supposed to be a melting pot mm-hmm. of all these different nationalities, well, these different cultures. <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose. <laughs> to to, to be fair, <laughs> a bunch of white people, mostly white people, let me rephrase that, were running away from religious persecution. So I'm not exactly sure they were like, hey, all you people of uh, non-same skin color, why don't you come on the boat too? Um, <laughs> no, you're coming on the boat. The boat. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're coming on a boat. Well, all right. Later. <laughs> let, me, let me. I get it. I get it. Don't, don't worry let about it. Let me explain don't. where I was coming from. I was thinking of them coming from England. Just to be clear, I was not disregarding the fact that people were institutionalized into slavery. My God, that really went sideways know, on me. I know. I, I know what you. I know. I'm just. It's just funny. It was just a cute little moment. Don't don't. It's okay. <laughs> I know between us as co-hosts we're cool, but I'm thinking about the greater audience as well. <laughs> it's watching and it's kind of like, damn, why don't you just like whitewash all that, Gary? No, I'm not intentionally doing that. I'm just saying, like, I'm doing it. I'm just not meaning to. Well, no, I, well, that's probably more true than I want to admit. The, the reality is, <laughs> what the country was forming, and we were stealing property that was not ours technically originally in such concepts we were probably not exactly inviting the whole world to come join us over time that's changed we still fight that to this day i mean historically in our own country here in america we have these issues about like immigrants and i'm like but we've always had issues with immigrants like y'all should really learn some history there was a time when we were like well we don't like the italians we don't like the irish we don't like the germans we don't like the like fill in the blank yeah we don't like you (laughs) and and for the fact all of those people were white. Yeah, well, it, for the most part, yeah. We I mean, started. It, uh, we started by hating ourselves. Um. Well, and that <laughs> so many things. We get that. That's a whole topic. Like self hatred. What is self hatred? Like. like <laughs> We talked about self love, so we might as well talk about self hate hatred, oh, right? We're doing it in the month of July, so, <laughs> right? But but this is what it all comes down to is, I think that's why pride, like conceptually for our community, and even for ourselves, is the antithesis, right? It's the like, is it that what pride is supposed to be? It's supposed to be the opposite of self hate, like that you. 
I can you see take that. pride in yourself. You accept yourself for who you are. You yeah. love yourself. And I don't mean love yourself like on Chatterbait. Like, just. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I think that's really what this time of year is about for the community. But at the same time, I mean, I, I, it, it, there's ebbs and flows. Like, I think in terms of activism and what we're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. I would admit in America when we had a, a previous administration in politics, I think a lot of us were more happy-go-lucky about progress and the things we were working towards. But I don't want to say there was a lot of like anger slash fear slash activism. I think mm-hmm. I regret to say this, there was some complacency or some some okayness. And I'm using air quotes like like, yeah, like we want to do more things and we're kind of fighting for this stuff, but like we weren't feeling in fear of like what the consequences could be. Uh-huh. And now more than ever, like there's things like the Detroit Pride recently that had the neo Nazi group that uh-huh. had protection that everyone was like, WTF? Like, and I just uh-huh. saw that there was an a article recently that the chief of police was like i think we made the right call by not like alerting anybody in advance that they were going to be there and participating and then the mayor turns around apparently and and agrees with whatever the police chief said and everybody's all pissed off about that and i'm just like um okay but (laughs) you know i mean it's this moment where you know that's the struggle of the country that we live in where everybody has the right to express themselves Mm -hmm. We sometimes say everybody does not have the right to their own facts. It's true. So our to kind of flip it up, not flip it, but change it a little bit. Everyone has a right to their. Everyone has a right to an opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean that your your opinion is automatically right. Well, some can be right, but usually that's a fact, not an opinion. Well, right, and I think that's what people like. And this is where we struggle sometimes. And this is the issue about agreeing to disagree is that while we collectively might as the three of us agree on one thing, we don't always agree on everything. And that's just the way we are as a species, you know, as like a humanity, we don't all agree to everything all the time. I think there's a utopian concept among some people that we will live in peace as a world one day and everybody will functionally get along and countries and borders will not be all that important and politics will be minimalized and blah, 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 blah. It's great. It's like, I think that's a, a goal to get towards. But at the same time, I think where we struggle sometimes is like to recognize that everyone has the right to have their quote unquote opinion and whether or not it's right as a matter of perspective. Mm. So that if I talk with somebody who completely disagrees with me about race, I can say that they're wrong, but they will feel that they are right. And that's where I think it gets muddy and working towards like a commonplace, I think is more the the frustrating part of stuff, you know, about, yeah, there are individuals that we don't necessarily agree with, but how they come around or perhaps change their perspective or awareness. I mean, you know, Mm -hmm. how they evolve, I guess, is a big piece about, I think the visibility factor, which I think is where we are celebrating a lot of that kind of stuff at this time of year. Yeah. So, um, I don't necessarily <laughs> been a big pride person. Like I've been involved in prides over the years. I've gone to more pride events in cities other than my own. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I own it. Like my city's smaller. It doesn't necessarily have the, right. the biggest of things. It's been growing a lot recently. Our things coming up in just a couple of weeks. Um, but. I think there was, it's not so much of a shame issue, but I feel more like this is my hometown. Like, and it's not really any, I'm still kind of in, I guess, in that mental space of like, this is like, it's not anybody's business, but my business. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not the person, like, I don't run around, you know, and shove my stuff in everybody's face. Um, take that sound bite how you will. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's 
it's the the truth of the matter but it's interesting to me that i think about it and i'm like yeah but i don't really think twice about going out of town to mm-hmm. another location maybe there is like some psychological safety in that that i'm just not recognizing it's kind of like you know yeah. um you know like i think about it and i'm like yeah like i'm not really one like i don't seek the limelight like i don't need to be in the news i don't need to be on the forefront of something like you know uh, a couple of years ago at the pride event drench forgot recognized as being not like a long-standing community member because of the number of years the event had existed so we got called up on stage we were given an award um and that was fine but then there was a part of me that's like oh there's a camera crew here okay like we might be on the six o'clock news tonight and i thought well if i get a call <laughs> <laughs> then I guess we're going to just start having that conversation because I'm not in the closet with my family, but I'm also not out. Like I just like your family I'm doesn't really sure. know the details of that side of you. Right. Which I'm sure like, I mean, hello, I'm a 45 year old single man who was really into Damon, you're still muted, who uh, is, yes, was very much into Broadway at one time and country music and Reba McIntyre, you know, and theater. (laughs) And, you know, the more you add up the facts, (laughs) start to recognize, oh, yeah, Gary hasn't had a girlfriend since, like, 92. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like I, I. That's where I think there's a big difference between like personal pride and like like maybe local community pride, and then like mm-hmm. pride on a bigger level as to how you exhibit yourself. I'm not ashamed of who I am. I just don't feel it's that many people's business. Agreed. Um, and you know, like, there's a there's a lot of other issues. Sorry, David. Um, about family, you know, and where you come up in. I don't want to speak on your behalf, Damon, but knowing about your family a little bit, I would think that if I came from an environment that was um, very spiritual based, that would be a big factor in how I handle myself. Mm-hmm. And Always. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could go on and on, but I'll kind of keep it short and simple. I've not, I'm like you. Um, I've not let fa- I've let some family members know, um, but I don't let everyone know. I don't broadcast it, but I don't, hide it per se you know i'm not lying to people about certain things i'm just kind of like this is who i am blah 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 if you ask the right question put that in there in my mind you will get the right answer and you will kind of figure it all out for yourself i'm not but i'm not going to tell you you know so it's one of these things however in this day and age with social media and whatever, like you could probably put my name in and probably put two and two together and get gay. Like it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> it really would not be that hard. Oh, you're um, in a chorus? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like the chorus and would it's be all a big men. One. Yeah. Like and every once in a while one. there's a drag queen. Like I mean yeah. how more <laughs> like it wouldn't it wouldn't take much like to put two and two together and get gay. But you know, on that same token, I do intentionally like specifically don't like do anything i don't do a whole lot um at home like you were saying like home is home well home is louisville and i you know i don't go down there for pride i've thought about doing it many times but you know i my hometown is my hometown and no matter how big louisville is it's still your hometown and um that's kind of where i'm at like i don't really like feel it you know, i don't feel like a need to like be like oh here i am you know da 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 da, da. so but on us on again on the on the flip of that i do like that i see what happens in the city i do love the people that we know down there that are out there and do, being prideful and they're having their um their pride festivals and parades and stuff so by all means go and do that i just choose not to do that i will and i have in the past done stuff here in cincinnati this is kind of the city where for lack of a better phrase, I did come out, you know, and came out in the city. I came in this city being gay, and therefore, this city has now become where I 
am proud of that and out and loud about that. Um, I sing in my chorus. I <laughs> am involved in a lot of things, and I get my picture taken. At, I've got my picture taken at festivals. I don't know if it's necessarily been put out there for everyone to see, but I've you know, I've been on the on stage, the big stage at the Pride Festival, and you could probably see me. So ta da! Like so it's. Well, and, and isn't that like kind of the irony though of the situation? Like I think about that I'm involved in the, the Pride Fest, I'm involved in the Pride Picnic. Like I've been doing things in the community for a very long time, like decade and a half plus to, to mm-hmm. going on two decades. Like so you know, it's interesting. Like I think there's a there's a personal pride, like how mm-hmm. you choose what you want to do and to be involved in a part of the advisory board of the you know, the local pride organization one of the groups i mean it's just you do your thing like in your own way and i think that like there's nothing wrong with that like it's a sense of personal pride Mm -hmm. uh and i'm just not one of those people that's a big you know shove it down your throat kind of situation that i think it's absolutely mandatory like drew said something not to speak out of turn because he's not here right now but he (laughs) made a comment i think last night he goes you know i was watching people in the bar and I just I don't remember behaving like that when I was their age. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what he meant. Like, don't get us wrong. Like, it was not like it was not debaucherous, and it was not like batshit crazy. But there were notably some people that were having a good time. Yeah. But their having a good time was very like um, uh, I don't know what like uh, like animated and. <laughs> They, um, they just really seem to be like me, me, me focused. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I understood where I think he was coming from. Like, like not only generationally did we come up in a different time of our um, uh, our country society, but we also have very different experiences. Him, you know, he's been on. He's talked openly about being a veteran and how he came out okay. through the military service, and that was a whole different circumstance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and I get that because I can understand how the military like isn't one to draw attention to itself naturally. So, like, I think that kind of falls in line with how you wouldn't necessarily want to be the center of attention in the room, um, whether it's amongst a close circle of friends or a complete, you know, building full of strangers, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and that there's different paths through that kind of stuff. And I, I mean, I think it really what it comes down to is that it takes all kinds. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and one of the things that I thought about in terms of this, um... hold up. Okay, I'm just going to stop the show for a moment because of <laughs> I was waiting. And fuck both of my co-hosts for just like sitting on that silently. <laughs> Says Gary. To be fair, do you remember anything pre World War II? I'll have to know for a fact. I was not alive then, but I like that era of America. But anyways. Because we were sold a bullshit bill of goods about like a utopian, like you know, society of. Anyways, moving on. Mm-hmm. Well, there was also World War One before that, so. Yes. And then Do you remember was, anything uh, then? There was prohibition, and there was the Great Depression, and there was the Roaring Twenties, and yes, I have a little bit of nostalgia for certain parts of Americana history. Anyways. Uh, but I want to know what you guys think. What the two of you think about? What if you're not proud? And let me explain what I mean by that. It's mm-hmm. not that you dislike being proud. You just are like indifferent. Like mm-hmm. you, you, you own and recognize that people out there are proud of who they are, but it's not for you. Yeah. Um, you don't have the pride, but you don't have the shame. So you're kind of neutral. Right. Like, I think it's a great way to put it, Jeff. Like, yeah, I had a friend growing up when I was in college that I had this <laughs> post-college, like this serious discussion with that they said it to me at the time. Just because I'm Italian doesn't mean I'm proud of it. And I was like, well, why wouldn't you be? And they're like, what is there to be proud of? I was like, well, you have your heritage and Italians have done amazing things and they make great food. And like, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. like I'm, <laughs> I'm like up this whole list of things. Like I'm not Italian, but as an outside observer, like I think these are things you could be proud of. And they were like, no. <laughs> and I was like, 
Okay? <laughs> like, it just, it really it, it, it dumped me. I, I, at the, my, I'm in Your brain place. broke. <laughs> it did. Like, and this person actually said flat out to me, you just don't get it. Not everyone is proud about who they are or what their history is or their culture or, you know, it's like, so what? I have brown eyes. Should I be proud of that? Like, I have, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I have 10 fingers. Like, it, they were being, you know, kind of per- hyperbolic a little bit. But, yeah. Right. They Their whole point was just because it is a part of me doesn't mean that I have to march in a parade and wave a flag and, you know, and have a mm-hmm. festival. Be enthusiastic. Festival. Right. Yeah, and I've met people like that, and in a lot of ways, I'm I'm totally fine with it. Like, you don't have to be out loud and proud. Like, you you don't have to be. You can still hold that personal proudness. And if you're not proud about it, then okay, like whatever, like go on and live your life. Like, I as, say, as long as you're not say, ashamed of it, it's all to good. Me, as long as, to me, as long as you're not making. Like if you're not being a being a dick about it, like if you're not like yucking anyone else's yum, if you're not making like those kind of phrases are the things that are kind of for me. Like right. I don't care if you're not proud. I don't care if you never go to a march in your life. If you, pride, gay pride, whatever. Like if you don't do it, that's that's fine. Just don't make a piss. You know, make other people pissy about the fact that they are. You know that someone else is proud, and someone else is is knows our history and wants to learn our history and w- is celebrating that history. If if you don't care or don't want to bother with that, totally fine. Just don't right. fuck up someone else's enjoyment of that. People go to Pride every year. We've been doing it for years. You know, so <clears throat> it's just something. I mean, it's not always just something you do, but for some people, it is they make a big deal about it. They make it part of their week or their, they, you know, they sign up for festival, they get involved, they volunteer, they, they march into parades, they, you know, get on stage, they, you know, propose, they do all these different things for the sake of that reason, for that proud or pride reason. If that is what you want to do, then that is what you want to do. If you don't want to do that for one reason or another, then don't. Oh, Just and you, don't say don't do it. Like, you could also for me. you could also say that it even you could also say that just because you're not like outwardly showing your pride about who you are necessarily that if you're you could put it as more of a black and white sort of thing where if you're not ashamed of yourself for whatever factor then you're proud of yourself for that because if you just may have a different level of like intensity of your pride. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, like, yeah, I'm gay. Yeah. And it's just a thing. Right. You, you sh- you're proud of that. It's just, it's very small. So it's yeah. not like it's, it's very an outward flashy sort of thing. Yeah. Like I would say that, that as I said, I'm I'm proud of being gay. I'm totally uh, perfectly fine. But besides, like wearing paraphernalia and doing a podcast, I don't go to Pride. I don't do anything, and it, it's very neutral sort of thing. But yeah, I would still say I'm just as proud as anybody. It's just my intensity is just very low. Well, I. I just think probably for you, like it's probably a social, you know, anxiety thing. Um, partly, like, I mean, yeah. yeah, partly. But, but like the 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 person who was saying that they're not proud of being gay, they're not ashamed of it. Maybe there really isn't necessarily a neutral thing. Is if you're not ashamed of it, you're proud of it. It's just you don't make a big deal not. of it. Mm-hmm. You know, well, it's just it's, low, it's very low intensity. To be fair. In some circles of spirituality, to have pride is sort of seen a little bit as a negative because awesome. you're yeah. because you're being self centered and egotistical in a way. Mm. So maybe that's an aspect of it. Like you, you know, you're you're definitely more in the neutral zone of this is just who I am. It's it's more of a kind of take it or leave it, and it's mm-hmm. not a it's not so much of like a fuck all y'all thing. It's just yeah, it's just it's just there. You know, it's kind of like 
my eyes are this color, my hair is this color, like that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I get that, and I think that everyone chooses their own um, ability for that. I think that there's a, I think there's a, a an aspect of recognition of what people have done. Mm-hmm. To give people that luxury, I guess you might say, about the ability to live your life how you want to. Mm-hmm. Because other people have, in varying ways, done stuff that sacrificed aspects mm-hmm. of their lives and things that they did that you want yeah. to um, give some some recognition, some ownership to that in a way. And, and I get that. I mean, I, I'm... I personally am grateful for all the things that have been done by the generations before me that got me to where I am today in and of this moment. I have the ability to work, have a roof over my head, to to sustain and take care of myself because of things that were done previous to me generationally within family and also within community that we've advanced. You know, we have technology. Mm-hmm. We have this capability now for us to be, yeah. you know, across the country hundreds of miles away from each other and have a conversation and for other people to tune into that and agree with us, disagree with us or not say anything at all. Um, (laughs) You know, and, and, you know, and that's one of those things. I mean, like I was telling you guys in in the pre-show about how I, you know, I'm out on Friday night and this gentleman starts talking about the podcast and I'm kind of like, Oh, well it's very nice to meet you. And then I figure out like, he watches rather regularly uh, like on YouTube, not when we're live, but later. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was kind of amusing to me because later I was kind of like, this is a part of what I guess we, we internally as co-hosts, we refer to as like the silent majority of the audience. Like there's lots of people out there who listen. Not everyone chimes in. Not everyone yeah. says, Hey, I blah, 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 you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think probably the vast majority of individuals live their life that way. At least here in, in in America, I feel comfortable saying the vast majority of people in our broader community, whether they identify as one of ch- choose the letter of your mm-hmm. ch- you know your selection, I think they just live their lives. And when we come around to this time of season, there's more of an aspect of I'm going to be a little more visible. I'm going to be a little more vocal. I'm going to choose to go to this activity to do this thing to be. Um, more representative of this portion of who I am as opposed to like it necessarily meaning everything Mm -hmm. of who you are. And, you know, it's really um, profound in a way, you know, to, to have that and to do those things. You know, I was thinking about it like, you know, this shirt that I'm wearing is the design for this year's, um, shirt for the pride organization they do a new shirt design they have a contest and blah 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 and this and that and like i really like this design this year you know it's the basic gay pride colors and blah 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 and that um helps represent the home you know city it's got the skyline outline yada 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 um but i started thinking about it i was like wow i don't really have a lot of like for lack of a better way to say gay like (laughs) shirts you know i I started thinking about it and I was like, um, technically I have the killer Bob, like pride stormtrooper shirt. That was a limited edition that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got the ride it out, which was the last of the 20 year anniversary of the Kings Island pride night mm-hmm. shirt, which isn't, which doesn't scream gay. Like, unless you really look at it, know what it means. You just be like, Oh, it's just a shirt. Um, and, like I have like one or two other things that like maybe have a rainbow. Like that's kind of it. Like I don't really have yeah stuff along those lines. But mm-hmm. that's my personal thing. Like when we were at the the festival this weekend and that. Like there was a lot of shirt designs and different things, but nothing really kind of caught out to you. Yeah, spoke out to me that I was like, I have to have that, you know. And I've yeah, that's kind of what I do. Like every year. So pretty much not every year, but. I often find shirts that are, I call, subtly gay. Um, <laughs> like, well, like the shirt I have on right now. I was it, just going to say, David, like, I yeah. think that that's a representative because I think a lot of people would look at your shirt right now and be like, oh, that's very that's very Pink Floyd. Yeah. Mm, not exactly. Not really. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's partially. Pokemon. Yeah, partially. It's Pokemon. It's colors. 
it's not the full rainbow, but to me, it's just enough to kind of give the hint. Yeah, like, right. hey, like if I were to set a Pride Festival, I, I usually buy shirts every year. I actually have a new one that I'll probably be wearing this year, um, which kind of has a similar-ish design to it. But I, 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 I tend to wear, I don't like the big, I would never be able to wear, like you've seen the, the, the Pride onesie, not onesie. Like, unitard. I forget what it's fucking called. Anyway, the it's jumper. The, yeah, thank you. Romper, romper. That's the there you go. Romper, for. romper. The the pride romper. That's all the rainbow colors, and it's you know it's. I, I would I would never be able to wear that. That just that just is like too flashy. Too flashy. Far too much for me. Now, would I wear it in like on, on stage with the chorus? Yeah, probably because that would be like to me that would be like performance. So it's I would drag. probably wear it's a costume. It's a costume. It's a drag thing. It may be I right. could probably do it then, but in my day to day life, I would not pick that up. Mm. Other Man. people are totally different. I mean, I'm similar with you because a lot of a lot of the shirts I have, besides things such as like consent is my foreplay shirt. Um, okay, and well, and that, then that's that's com. Com. <laughs> it comes out loud. <laughs> <laughs> or, or then now, this, now that we're sticking here's your cookie although that's not very necessarily prideful just punful but um there's a i have a uh pride D D shirt which is basically just a the a series of d20s in the pride logo or in the pride colors yeah okay which okay. i saw matt mercer wear on critical role at one time and i'm like where's that shirt <laughs> <laughs> I want that shirt. Yeah, well, it, it, it's like yeah. I, I saw a guy in Columbus last night at the bar that had this great like charcoal gray shirt on that had all of these names running down it that were in the rainbow colors, and I was like, "Where did you get that?" But it, but it was like names and other things, like and so it was like different in a way, and and he was like. Believe it or not, I got it on Amazon. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, I know. Like, and, and that's the thing I think I like about where we are today as a society is that like, you, your pride can be customized. Like, You can choose how you want to uh, be recognized, whether it's subtle or in your face. I mean, it's funny, David, that you were talking about like the romper thing. Because I'm like, yeah, because last night at the bar, I was looking at two young gentlemen who were standing there in onesies. And one of them... I realized after a while was a Care Bear. He was Cheer Bear, the pink one, mm-hmm. and his like zipper was all the way down to like his navel, and he had a red leather harness on underneath. I don't know why. Um, right, because that's what he wanted to wear. Uh, <laughs> but he was, you know, kind of handsome to look at and stuff. And then like, but then the other one was like this teal aquamarine unicorn onesie, and both of them to me are like, no doubt about it. Y'all cocksucking faggots. Like, <laughs> that's what that says to me. Maybe and you say that in the most person. loving way. <laughs> well, I mean, to the lay people in the public, it might not say that, but I was kind of like, okay, like, you're really kind of putting that out there. Just saying. Boom. <laughs> but I was like, I would not be caught wearing one of those. It's yeah. not by a style, it's not by aesthetic. I think it's also too much. For me yeah. personally. And and again, like I will put it like this. I, like I think Lloyd actually puts it in a really nice way. He goes, It's hard with pride to understand the idea that you think it's all a bit much or that they don't think it's proud to be gay. But bitches die so you can feel indifferent. So for the love of God, if you're going to say you won't be proud of being gay, be proud of the people who have died to let you sit on the fence. Like, I am totally fine with you having as I said before, like you don't want to celebrate. You don't want to go out. You don't want to do it. Like, you don't want to go to the festival. You don't want to go to the events. But, you know, you should recognize that there is a history before that that gives you that opportunity to kind of say that or do that. You know, um, also understand that silence equals death. But that's just a whole other thing for me. But, you know, on the side of that. Well, but. Yeah, I mean, I I find it interesting because one of my dearest friends this weekend texted me and said, you know, I feel bad because every time of this year, this this comes around in the year, like in June, it's Pride Month. That's how we do it mostly here in America. 
because of Stonewall and, and that kind of stuff, um, you know, in the recent marriage equality passing in the month of June. I mean, there's just been a lot of stuff that's momentally happened in this month. And the person said, I feel bad because I never think about it. And then when it's here, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, like, oh, yeah, like Pride's happening. And I never think about going anywhere or doing anything. And I've, I've already made other plans. Like, I mm-hmm. take a vacation. I whatever. You know, it's like and I find it interesting because I think some people are that way and it's not about being a good gay versus a bad gay it's just they're just living their life and to them Mm -hmm. like like owning rainbow stuff is it's okay and it's not so much a novelty but it's really not their like frame of thought like it's just Mm -hmm. you know it's like I'm married to someone of the same gender and we have a home and we just live our lives and we do our thing like I don't need to go running around afloat and passing out candy or throwing beads or, you know, uh, doing, you know, a bubble machine thing or, you know, (laughs) saying, yes, queen, at every drag queen that walks past, you know, in ill-fitting shoes. I mean, you just... (laughs) Read. (laughs) Wow. I will say I was proud of one queen in the parade in, in Columbus this weekend who was barefoot on her on her stage. And I was like, smart. Like, <laughs> did not necessarily go with the outfit. I'm pretty sure there was a beautiful pair of heels hiding somewhere. But she was like, fuck that noise. I'm going to be standing up here for hours. I will be barefoot on here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, my, my, my thing I took away from that is that, like, one of my dear friends does not – think of themselves in that way like Mm -hmm. i used to say a long time ago shortly after i came out and graduated college that i thought there was kind of this chart this not a bell curve but like like you have this whole thing like a personal journey of a certain generation i don't know if that's really quite the case as much anymore because of all the visibility um and the acceptance but there was a time where it was kind of like i think i might be gay and then you're like i maybe i don't know i'm not really sure and it's kind of this whole like you're gonna put your to your your toe in the pool kind of thing like mm-hmm. something happens along the way and you're like personally confiding in yourself you're like i think i'm gay like i think like i i like people the same gender or i'm bi and i like you know people who you know both binary genders or whatever the case is mm-hmm. and then something happens you have an experience And then, like, the whole thing, like, the scale tips. And it's no longer, like, I think I might. It's I am. And, like, and the whole thing gets, like, loud. Like, we went through this thing where we were kind of, like, I'm, yay! (laughs) Like, you did everything. Like, you bought all the rainbows and did all the things and went to all the prides. And, like, you know, just, like, shove, shove, shove in everybody's face. Because (laughs) it's been so long being repressed Mm-hmm. either personally or culturally or whatever society like <laughs> like like honey you did not come out of the closet like you bust them motherfucking doors down with a blowtorch like there is no going back like you know like no like this this is all there is to it and then over time like that amount of enthusiasm diminishes because you're kind of like you know i'm gay like yeah yeah it's just mm-hmm. a thing you know it's a part thing. of who i am because when I came out in college, one of my dear friends in college actually explained to me after the year of my being gay. Uh, I'm being I, gay! Because I apparently was so obnoxious, I said everything was gay. Which I don't exactly remember this, but <laughs> as I was told, like I said the stop sign was gay, I said everybody was gay, and that they were just repressed. Um, like, <laughs> apparently it was quite the handful uh, at the time. And they said... Like, it got so bad that they were like, I don't know if I could really be friends with you because I was being a wow. Like, that's wow. how how much I flipped. Like, I had spent almost two decades, like, not being. And now that I was accepting myself, I was so accepting. Right. Like, I had completely, you know, more than 180 maybe. And they said, I was really glad that you calmed down. Because if you had stayed at that level for the rest of your life, I would have been like, no. Like, I just (laughs) cannot be friends with you, like, around you. Because, like, it had had moved from, like, pride into being obnoxious, basically. Which I find very interesting looking back all these years of being like, wow. But I don't know if, like, I really do think maybe in some of this kind of generationally, like I was saying a little bit ago, uh, you know, now with 
I guess, openness and acceptance and like the landscape changing children who are, you know, single digits are self identifying themselves. Mm -hmm. And like that just blows my mind. Yeah. Because we, we made a joke this weekend about how things were very different. Like now you could literally have porn in less than seconds, <laughs> like literally right in front of your face. But I come from a generation where we kind of crack up about the fact that, like, looking at the Sears and Roebuck men's underwear section was the closest thing you got to, like, seeing mm-hmm. men. For for me, it was uh, the Usenet news groups. It took about five minutes for the image to load. <laughs> right. Over dial-up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that yeah, it, but that that kind of reminds me, like one of the things that we're talking about that whole like obnoxious bursting the door down thing. That reminds me of a time when now that I realize it, um, when I was younger, I was a pup. But Bef- as far as I know, even before pup play was even a thing. Well, <laughs> well, the current iteration of. Pup play. Pup and I, because the reason I, I phrase it that way is because I think always within the kink community there was pup play. It's just it's changed yeah. quite a bit. To give you a real quick, very brief like history lesson, there was a point in time where pup play was considered a humiliation aspect. Um, it was done. Doms did it to subs to kind of put them in their place. So you were they were forced to act like a dog to like humiliate, you know, chastise them, and then right. some kinky fucker got off on it and got hard on it and ta-da! <laughs> well, well, we have play. I was but, actually talked to by by an elder gay uh, saying, gay. saying, you know, there's kind of like the two, these two personalities of you. There's Jeff and there's there, there's the puppy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hey, I had a headspace. <laughs> I mean, it's Probably not exactly, yeah, you're right. It's not exactly like, like the, 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 the original or the current version of of pup play, but I, I had a slight headspace when I suddenly got around a bunch of gay bears. I got all excited and yappy and tension hoary. Which I mean, but I, I think that that's a natural... was a chihuahua, I suppose, <laughs> or a beagle. I don't know if I would be proud of that. Um, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I like dogs. Yippee dogs, not as much. Um, <laughs> But the, no, but I mean, you're right. Like, there's, but I think that's a part of a manifestation of our personalities and how we were, like, in, in expressing ourselves and, and over time. And therefore, you know, you have, uh, I think, all sorts of different levels of personal pride. It, a lot of it is tied to, to who you are. Um, so, uh, you know, like, someone said to me this weekend in Columbus, like, I guess this is what I do now. I, I help culture younger gays, like, hmm. which I found very interesting and insightful that this person was saying, you know, that that they see a a little bit of a sense of responsibility to help someone who's younger, who is a young adult, starting to find their way in the world in some ways, to like gift them things or help them. Uh, accomplish certain stuff yeah. and I think that's gone on for many generations it's been more and more visual and apparent since probably you know soon after Stonewall where we were naturally just being more visible I know many like older gay individuals in the bear community or leather or kink or whichever you know mm-hmm. check the box that are doing things and helping um, individuals get their their kind of feet stable um, yeah, yeah. and assisting them like at my own event there's someone that's been coming for years that always typically has room available in their room if somebody needs to go and more often than not most years someone says you know what I can't go but if you know somebody that really wants to go and can't like doesn't have the finances just give them my run package and I think that's a really good <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think that's a really good way of showing, like, kind of paying it forward and being, like, uh, I don't know, like, responsible in a way. Like, showing that you care about mm-hmm. 
yeah. individuals doing other things. In some way, in, in a lot of ways, it's the way to kind of pay it forward. You know, it's possible that someone had that in their life. The elder gay, as we say, um, I like that phrase, by the way, <laughs> um, that kind of guides them or gives them some information or feedback or whatever. I think for a lot of us, especially, you know, our age now, maybe had that, you know, um, someone in our lives, be it a platonic relationship or maybe even an actual relationship um, where they were, I would like elder gay mentor, friend, confidant, someone that was able to kind of give you that guidance. Because for a lot of us, you know, we didn't come out until our teens, 20s, you know, what have you. So um, you kind of needed that aspect that, you know, someone to kind of help you out. You know, I know I had a few when I was in college, when I officially came out as well, um, that for, you know, not for any benefit. I mean, some, there was some benefit, but not for real, any real benefit. They just were there to kind of ask questions or answer questions or to, you know, help you out. Um, and I think that's honestly another way to kind of be proud of who you are, you know, to kind of lead the next generation or show the next generation that it's okay. And to kind of um, hopefully give them that, those tools that they can then move on with the next generation that comes along. Mm-hmm. Um, this world, this world is always changing and this, the, I feel like the LGBT movement and everything else that has been going on is kind of changing and shifting. Um, hopefully we're done with this downswing of bullshit that we've been dealing with here in America, especially, but also around the world. Um, and are hopefully going to be able to kind of change that momentum again um, within the next year or two, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, but I think with that will come the aspects or the questions about like, how do you now celebrate pride and how would you be proudful or prideful um, to, for days and years to come? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the visibility naturally leads to the advocacy aspect of, of pride as well as to activism. Like the, I can naturally see in the course of history, the more that people were out, the more that people paraded, the more that people did things to say, I am blank, you know, fill in the blank kind of thing. I think more and more individuals were like, Oh, Hey, that's my neighbor. That's my family member. That's my, you know, whichever. And perhaps I should, you know, recognize them just as a human being and give them that decency that they should have the right to own a home, to have kids, Mm -hmm. to be married, to whatever. Um, And I think, you know, there are ebbs and flows, there are advances and regressions, and I think we're going through one of those times it's a bit of a struggle because we feel like we were advancing, 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 sometimes not very quickly, sometimes like making big strides. And now we're at this moment where we're kind of feeling like, what the hell is going Mm -hmm. on? But I think that there are a lot of people who feel very passionate now about voicing their opinions and their thoughts. And what we're maybe not pleased with on our side of things is that there isn't really healthy debate, Mm -hmm. like actual discussion. It seems more like, you know, people are, people have like, they got their camp this is where I am. And it's kind of like, I'm not budging from here and I'm not really going anywhere. And it's like, well, that doesn't help, you know, because the reality is if someone needs assistance, there are certain things that are important. And in certain moments, those things don't matter anymore. Um, Like I'll put it this way. If I had a neighbor that was a bigot and their house is on fire I would not hold their bigotry against them if mm. their loved ones needed assistance getting out of the home. Do you know what I mean? Like there, right. there yeah. comes a point where I think like it just gets it's much more bigger picture or simpler to simply say you have the decency of being recognized as an individual period, like end stop. And then you know, the fact that like you like to play your music really loud on the weekend and it wakes me up, you know, or whatever is an issue. 
but we can probably work through that if we actually choose to engage Mm -hmm. and do that kind of thing as opposed to like, you know, ignoring or whatever. So I think, I think my hope is that overall people recognize, you know, that do what you want to do for yourself, however you feel comfortable with it. uh, And be okay with whatever that means to other people as well. Sure. If you're, you know, going to be active, if you're going to be an advocate, you know, you're going to mm-hmm. do certain things to to be out loud and proud, or if you're just going to be me, me. that is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, me. yeah. I mean, I thought it was very fun. Like one of the things I remember seeing from the. Um, Columbus Pride, so Virginia West, who is Nina West's ragmother, right. um, sort of led off the parade, or I believe something along those lines, that she was doing the song This Is Me from The Greatest Showman, and she's performing it, like, at the front of the parade. There's a whole bunch of bikers behind her, and she goes into the crowd for a while. She goes behind them, and then there's a video where she essentially goes up to the, the protesters, and because she's at the end of the song where it's like, this is me. And she just does the, this is me right there, right in front of him. And I'm just like, I you mean, know, girl. hallelujah, go ahead, do that thing. But <laughs> I was worried to death. I mean, fortunately, nothing happened. But like, there's a moment, there's a moment where I was just like, this could get really ugly really quickly. And we have a whole other situation going on with this Pride Festival. Mm-hmm. But as with most, you know, protesters and whatever, they were polite, I will say, or just they, they chose not to engage. They they stuck to their protesting, and mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah, which was pretty much just standing there and holding which the is, There wasn't which anyone is loud. And, yeah. So it was just very, it was just like, I just, I love that moment because it was, you know, that's what she was doing. She was wearing a rainbow pride dress, um, um, you know, sensible heel. <laughs> um, you know, big hair. It was, it was, it was there. She was there, and just to kind of have the courage to do that, and to then go specifically, intentionally to the protesters with the song "This Is Me" playing in the background was kind of a me like a do it, like yes, do it because there are people who can't do it because there are people who won't. And and I think that's the biggest um, thing that I appreciate is, yeah, I'm not always there at every single event. Mm-hmm. And I, like, for example, are things coming up here in Erie? We're going to have a parade and a festival. I'm not going to be in the parade. It's not that I'm not proud. I'm actually going to be down at the park setting up the booth. Like, you can't, t- yeah. it's very difficult to do both at the exact same moment. Yeah. So, you know, you choose you choose your own advocacy, you choose your own representation and how you want to do that thing. So I'm hoping that everybody does that for themselves in, in some yeah. manner. So Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. All right. I think that's it. Yep. Yeah. We're all proud. Not necessarily loud, but proud. Yeah. yeah. What guess... have you done today to make you feel proud? Uh had insomnia and slept for four hours. <laughs> Slept it's in, had had brunch with a with a bestie, and uh, then drove through the rain to come do a podcast with you guys. So, ta-da! <laughs> I spent the day. Well, I spent the afternoon with my partner. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Anyways, to read into that. Anyways, guess what, folks? That's the end. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm going to do a thing quickly here and uh, there's plenty of ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail six here or otherwise at 361 I'll talk to 361-265-8255. You find us on the various social media outlets at comesoutloud in the appropriate place the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, you can join our Entourage chat where you can get notifications when we go live um, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col and also see some dick on occasion and it's very good looking dick uh, 
Another way to find out when we're going to be recording these shows, for the most part, uh, is by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinygirl.com slash calendar dash col. We recently found out you can really only do that on a computer. Surprise, surprise. Um, you can get merchandise such as this Consent is My Foreplay shirt in various different styles, including bear, uh, pup, and leather. And maybe something new is around here. I don't know when that's going to happen, but maybe. <laughs> At zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, we thank our patrons, which, uh, d- d- I mean, at the beginning of the month, we uh, just got paid, and we appreciate all of our patrons. Uh, at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And you can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us through Google Play Podcast. You can find me anywhere on the internet that says Box Tech, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other. If you wish to find me, you can find me at Theater Cubs 79 on most bear related sites and also Tumblr. Um, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to follow me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GareBear73. Uh, if you want to see what replaced my porn on Tumblr, you would go to G A R B E A R seven three X X X on Twitter. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>